by turning our attention now to East Africa. The East African Community Common Market Protocol has been in place for about a week now and business need leaders are now gathering in Kenya to discuss the opportunities that the EAC could unearth for many businesses in that region. Joining us from Nairobi, Kenya is Kelly Kiulu uh, from East Africa Business Council. Kelly, thank you very much for your time today. All right, let's start off with some of the opportunities because clearly the opportunities are relatively vast. They span from various sectors and especially when it comes down to the fact that trade borders are not going to be as tightly held as before. Uh, what are you viewing right now as the biggest opportunity in East Africa? Um, first of all, we look at what is the common market going to unlock. and It's going to unlock the four pillars of the East African uh, economy, which is movement of goods, services, and capital, as well as uh, the right uh, to settle in any of the five partner states of East Africa by the business uh, uh, community in East Africa. Mm. Now, the opportunities uh, are quite wide and varied, depending on each of the partner states, because um, we have 130 million uh, people population, and that uh, would uh, create an uh, appropriate market large enough for any investor to consider investing in East Africa where you find from agri-business, uh, mm. that is the opportunity to invest in agriculture as well as uh, in mining because we have uh, quite a lot of new minerals in East Africa, uh, to tourism as well as uh, to the service uh, sector. Mm. Well, obviously, uh, exciting opportunities that have been put on the table, uh, but also just focusing on each individual country, you know, looking at Rwanda, looking at Burundi, at Uganda, Tanzania, and of course in Kenya. Where do you think the most opportunities lie? Where have you seen the most appetite at this point in time? Because all countries have fantastic growth prospects when it comes to the agribusiness, when it comes to telecom penetration, to the mining industry as well, and then also not forgetting the energy sector. Right. If you go into uh, Tanzania, for example, they, they have a vast uh, potential for agribusiness and uh, because the country is quite a rebel, uh, a large population, and as well as the, the component, about 80% of the country is a rebel. Now, uh, with very good climate. Uh, remember, that's a country of mm. Mount uh, Kilimanjaro. Then we have Zanzibar, the island, uh, with uh, a lot of opportunities for agriculture as well, so almost 100%. Um, in mi mining sector, you find Tanzania is leading in this region, uh, followed by Uganda the other day found uh, oil. Mm. So they are exploring um, also oil in Kenya and uh, Tanzania. The possibility of oil in Kenya is very high. Uh, the three combined countries, Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania, because of the Lake Victoria, as well as the diversity in uh, wildlife, uh, do attract a lot of international tourists into this market. So that sector is important and very, very critical, particularly because the countries share the natural resources in that respect. Mm. There are a lot of national parks uh, which host animals which cross from one country to the other. The world famous Mara is actually between Kenya and Tanzania, mm. uh, which is the eighth wonder of the world. Then you go into the service sector, uh, you have regional transport um, uh, hub in Nairobi, uh, which uh, is midway between South Africa and North Africa, as well as East Africa and West Africa. So in a way, you find there's a lot of opportunities in that uh, respect in the transport sector. And then, of course, the, the main way is the entry into the Indian Ocean uh, for import of goods and export of goods. Uh, through um, uh, uh, either Mombasa port or the port of Dar es Salaam, which uh, hub uh, uh, for the for quite a number of uh, uh, landlocked countries like uh, mm. uh, Southern Sudan, Eastern Congo, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, Ethiopia, uh, Rwanda, and Burundi. Mm. Burundi has a high potential in agriculture, uh, so does Rwanda. Uh, so, uh, Uganda again mm. has high potential in agriculture. So we have. Uh, what you may call uh, 
a mixed mm. uh, bag of opportunities. Definitely, a mixed bag investors. of opportunities, Kelly. And not only that, I mean, incredible opportunities that lie ahead, but it's all about development. It's all about investment at the end of the day. Do you think the East African community has enough liquidity to try and invest into these sectors? Or do you think it's going to come in the form of foreign direct investment? Do you think it's going to be about going to the World Bank and, and receiving more loans? Because we know recently uh, Kenyan government received around 36.3 billion shillings uh, to up its health and energy sector. Is, you know, what kind of investment are you going to be viewing going forward from here? Uh, as I said, is it in the form of FDI? Is it going to be locally based? Again, if you look at uh, the mode of uh, the ESC, it is driven by both government and private sector through public-private mm -hmm. sector partnership. Now that would mean that in infrastructural development, particularly where you have joined infrastructural development like railways, roads and uh, energy, you will find there is uh, governments themselves, there is uh, development partners coming in and there is a private sector coming in. Uh, so that is the approach that has been taken and already there are some projects on the ground uh, creating the sort of uh, to pave the way for uh, in the in, an integrated development plan mm. which will uh, ultimately lead to uh, proper appropriation of resources uh, and of course investing in the uh, right uh, areas like energy. Mm -hmm. Already Kenya is sharing um, with Tanzania what they call Songa Songa gas uh, which is also going to attract private sector investment. Of course there is international uh, lending facilities of course World mm -hmm. Bank IFC, uh, but uh, again, um, that is, uh, if we to look at the, the percentage of contribution, uh, you find there's quite uh, enormous investment from uh, domestic resources. Uh, Kelly, just looking at the region as a whole and for 2010 and perhaps even just looking at the kind of investment we could be seeing uh, in the next financial period, how much money do you think is going to flow through the EAC for development projects? Um, at the moment, because the ESC just launched a common market mm. and they're in the process of harmonizing their budgets and looking at uh, also harmonizing the policies uh, for domestic uh, taxes and the policies for exports in terms of common external uh, tariffs. Uh, at this stage, one is looking at a, at a planning stage, uh, a much more tangible um, you know, focus should be considered perhaps in the next six months. But at the moment, we're seeing a percentage uh, which is around 20% of investment in that region. Kelly, do you think there's enough cohesion when it comes to the EAC? We know that it's been in the making for over five years. We're talking about cyber laws possibly being enacted at some point in time. We know that there's been a little bit of conflict when it came to tariff barriers. Uh, we know that there are issues when it comes to uh, languages and, of course, being cohesive on that front. What do you think the big challenge for the EAC is going forward? Well, First and foremost, remember the history of East Africa um, actually has uh, a lot uh, of contribution towards uh, what we are experiencing. And if you recall, we've only taken 10 years to come to where we are since the launch of the East Africa community mm. in 1999. And uh, that is because that has been fast tracked by the fact that historically uh, East Africa used to be one territory and we have had in the past uh, the East African currency uh, before, this is not the first time. Uh, we have had a common market before from 1948. And again, uh, from the 20s, East mm -hmm. Africa used to be administered as one, one uh, territory by the British um, you know, colonial powers until uh, in the early 60s when they transferred uh, power back to the indigenous uh, uh, communities. However, they continued collaborating under East African community uh, for about 10 years until 1977. Mm -hmm. And it's only uh, broke down for 20 years and we're back again yeah. uh, from 1999. Therefore, you can see there's a lot of historical Definitely, experiences. Kelly. And, uh, yeah. So we are restoring. Exactly. Uh, the same uh, structures that were there before. Yeah. It's exciting time for the East African community, definitely. But